All right, let's try this again. So Luna has decided that she doesn't want to ride in the trailer and that she's taken off to go and try to find Noah. All right, so while we have a minute here, let's do our usual history lesson. So this line was constructed by Canadian Northern Railway between 1911 and 1914. It was going to be one of the final pieces in Canadian Northern's transcontinental ambitions. The Canadian Northern Railway Company got its start in Manitoba back in 1896, um, buying up some railway charters and things like that. Their first big project was a construct, uh, sorry, was constructing a line between the then city of Port Arthur, which is now Thunder Bay, and Winnipeg. And that line was built between 1899 and 1902. Now she's coming back. And here you can see there's a piece of uh, rail connector. So obviously we're into uh, jointed rail here. And so eventually Canadian Northern started building lines all throughout the prairies. You see all pieces of tie here. And I, I was actually shocked there was a lot of rock work in this area um you know as you go to the further to the west we've we've already done section a little bit farther so we're at mile post uh between 1.7 and, and 2 here um ar around 9 it gets really swampy so i was kind of really surprised to see this rock work and there is some pretty uh pretty substantial cuts there you know not terribly high but i mean certainly this is probably in the 10 foot range and some length to them as well. So as I was saying, the Canadian Northern Company started building rail lines all throughout the prairies. And eventually they started building north from Toronto, uh, reaching up into the Sudbury area. Now, uh, around this time, Canadian Northern realized that their company, for their company to be successful in the long term, uh, they had to have a transcontinental connection. Now, the problem was, is that Canadian Northern really did not want to build this section of line. They did not want to build between the uh, Sudbury area, specifically Ruel, where the end of steel was, and Port Arthur, because it was going to be very difficult and therefore very expensive. Here you can see the continuation of the rock cut here. So they looked at a lot of different arrangements and uh, uh, unfortunately, oh, look at that. I didn't even notice this. So we have to take a break from our story here. So what we have is we actually have a <laughs> very well peppered speed sign. Maybe I'll take my helmet off here. So a very well peppered speed sign. So you can see the speed 30. So this would have been pointing that way in the direction that we're going. So it would have been pointed to the west. Um, and so you can see the speed's increasing to 30 miles an hour. Absolutely peppered with bullet holes. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a sign with so many bullet holes in it. Uh, usually you see some, but not, uh, not this many. Uh, and then you also see the sign above that, uh, the white sign that says OCS. Uh, and OCS stands for Occupancy Control System. So what that basically means is the Kinghorn being a secondary line, which we're trying to get to in our story, um, essentially uh, was not signaled. Uh, this was not a main line. The main line is actually just to the north of us, uh, and we'll get to that in our story. Uh, and so basically this meant that the movement, Luna's whining because Noah's not in sight, um, uh, essentially because it wasn't a main line, it was a secondary line, it was controlled by uh, radio communication. 
Uh, and so um, it, it kind of fluctuated. So I know there was places like um, Winnipeg or Edmonton. Uh, so basically, uh, movement on the line, you had to basically radio in. And there was, you know, I mean, it wasn't a particularly a big deal because there was only two trains a day, one in each direction uh, towards the end. Um, but certainly this is an important thing. So this, um, this sign actually marks uh, the beginning of a station here. Um, and so the station's name was uh, Bihun. Uh, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that properly. I'll put it up on the screen. Uh, and so basically, um, this station was, uh, was a late addition. Um, it was added somewhere between 1996 uh, and 2005. And I'll flash those timetables up. You'll see the 96 one, it's not there. And then on the 2005 one, it is. So this wasn't a traditional station in the sense that there was a, uh, a siding or anything like that. Um, essentially what it was, was it was just an indicator of the western limit of the yard here at Long Lac. Um, and uh, so the name, um, there was actually three stations that were kind of added probably all around the same time. There was Bihun, it was here, Zroback, which is close to Jellicoe, and um, um, Kohut. Uh, which is near Thunder Bay and uh, they were all named after um, individuals who worked uh, for Canadian National Railway and so what you'll be able to do uh, is uh, if you click on the link in the description you'll be able to go on my website and you'll be able to read a little bit more about William Behan who this station is named after and um, uh, again there's not really much here um, this is kind of where the uh, quote-unquote station would have been just trying to look around to see if I can see a, a Station board a sign that says be hun, but I don't see anything kind of a little bit of a low area here kind of seems like it was washed out a little bit Okay, let's get back to our story now before we get going here. This is a nice little treat here I didn't think I'd see these this early. So we have some ra raspberries already out Luna's not around, so I can't give her any. Here she comes. All right, so Canadian Northern did not want to build this line between Ruel and Port Arthur because it was going to be very expensive. So they looked at all kinds of different options and uh, unfortunately, none of them uh, kind, of, uh, kind of worked out. If we listen carefully, you can actually hear a train in Long Lac. This is a repaired section of grade here. So they looked at all kinds of different options. Unfortunately, none of them panned out. So they were forced to build. And so construction, as I mentioned, began in 1911 and lasted until 1914. So the last spike was driven. Uh, on New Year's Day 1914 and the line opened for traffic in 1915 now unfortunately um, the Canadian Northern Company uh, began to rant, run into financial problems uh, a couple of years later um, a lot of it was due to construction costs building this section and building through the mountains of British Columbia and as well as uh, issues dealing with World War One and so the uh, the company uh, eventually had to be taken over by the Canadian government here you can see we're going through another rock cut again quite a number of them on this section I was very shocked to see the uh, the rock cuts here you can see here we're probably maybe seven feet high so on both sides of the grade, it's very grown in. There's a lot of grown in sections on, on this uh, piece of line. Uh, here you can see a tie. So uh, in 1918, Canadian Northern was forced to merge, amalgamate, whatever word that you want to use, with a bunch of other Canadian government owned bankrupt lines. 
known as the Canadian Government Railways. And that merger produced uh, Canadian National Railways. Sorry, I'm just looking for my milepost marker here. Which is right here. There it is. And so here is, uh, maybe we'll continue our story. So there's a milepost marker here, milepost two. Um, and so what ended up happening uh, was the, uh, the Canadian Northern Company was forced to merge, amalgamate, whatever you want to call it, with a bunch of other uh, Canadian government-owned um, bankrupt rail lines known as the Canadian Government Railways. And that merger produced Canadian National Railways. Now, it took about five years uh, to complete the um, nationalization process with the adoption uh, or with the integration of the Grand Trunk Lines. Now, um, this line, its original name uh, was the Long Lake Subdivision of Canadian Northern Railway. Um, and um, so what happened was, is that uh, uh, eventually when CN took over, the name was changed to the Long Lack Subdivision. Uh, and then in 1924, the name changed again and it became the Kinghorn Subdivision. Now something very significant happened in 1924. And I mentioned the train that you heard back there. Uh, so essentially, uh, one of the things that Canadian National decided to do uh, was they decided to build a section of rail line from Long Lac um, to a place called Nikina. And Nikina is about 30 miles north of here. And uh, 30 miles north of here, there's another rail line. And that was a, a rail line that was built in conjunction between uh, the Canadian government and the Grand Trunk uh, Company. So the Grand Trunk built a section of railway from Winnipeg to the west. The Canadian government built everything from uh, Winnipeg east. And so that was known as the National Transcontinental. So uh, what ended up happening was, is that um, by building a rail line between Long Lac and Nikina, uh, essentially trains could run from Toronto, Long Lac, Nikina, Winnipeg. And by doing that, the route was 100 miles shorter than going Toronto, Long Lac, Port Arthur, Winnipeg. Um, and the grades were better because you didn't have to drop down to the level of Lake Superior and climb back up. And so um, what they uh, ended up doing by doing that, that became the main line, which it still is today. And you can hear the train running on there. I don't know if you can hear that in the background. I can hear it. And then um, this line became a secondary line. Um, and so um, um, it continued operating until 1960. In 1960, the name of this line changed. It was, or changed, but there was a significant change that happened. Um, CN, um, you know, uh, made some upgrades, incorporated their modern logo. Uh, and started merging a whole bunch of lines. And so what they did was they merged this line, the Kinghorn, with the more easterly line, which is known as the Dorian subdivision. And the whole line became the Dorian subdivision from Long Lac to Port Arthur. Um, and so I uh, continued operating until 2005 when CN decided to discontinue service. Uh, and then they began pulling up the rails between 2005, uh, sorry, 2008 and 2010. Now, milepost two uh, is the mileage on the Kinghorn. Here, you can hear it. Let's see if there's another blast. So milepost two is the mileage on the Kinghorn. So for the original line, the, the Canadian Northern Long Lake subdivision, what we have to do is we have to add 100.8 miles because that line started in Horn Payne, not Long Lac. And so the mileage would be uh, 102.8. So 102.8. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to hold up here for a second and then we're just going to continue our westward journey.